Hey, what's going on you guys and welcome back to this Gumpla building series. We're building the HGUC Yakadoga and just in case there's anybody who has missed some previous parts, I just wanted to do a little intro again first just to say that once again this is just a series where I'm just showing basically how I uh, go about building models and just giving some general tips, some things that I know of. I don't know everything and my techniques are not the only way or the best way, I'm sure, so just take everything, I mean, you don't have to do what I do and by all means I encourage you guys to look at what other people do as well and just see what works for you and find what uh, techniques you like, what you don't like, what you think works best for what you're doing or not. Anyway, this is just what I do, take, what, take from it what you will. Uh, so with that, we are now finished with all of the uh, painting and detail painting and everything's looking pretty good, uh, it's coming together, but the next thing we need to do is throw on some uh, top coat, so I've got that here, and then we're going to start with some panel lining and then some decaling and then finally some, weather coat, uh, some weathering before doing a, another final layer of top coat after that. So in this episode we're just going to do just the uh, top coat now and then some panel lining and then the next video will be uh, decals and then the next one after that will be just some weathering and then we'll be finished so just a couple more videos yet we're almost done it's really coming together uh, so without any further waiting let's get into some top coating okay so top coat if you guys are beginners then maybe you know of top coat as basically the way to seal everything once you're all done with the kit but you can and sometimes you should actually use top coat of two or three times or more, I mean depending on how much you're gonna do, throughout the build. Now uh, I'm done with all of the painting so the reason I want to do some top coating now is because I just want to make sure I don't mess up any of the painting that I've already done. So I'll throw on some top coat, that'll help just to protect all of the paint and then as I'm doing kind of more stuff, the lining, decaling, and the weathering, I can just, if I mess up on that, I can just kind of get rid of that without worrying about um, ruining the paint underneath. So that's good, just kind of a little bit of an insurance policy kind of. So that being said, the um, top coating at this stage also doesn't have to be super thorough and cover everything. I mean, it's always best to be thorough anyway whenever you can, but just in case uh, you're not really thorough at this point in time, it's probably going to be okay because like I said, you're just wanting to make sure that you're kind of just covering the areas that need to be covered. So as long as uh, any areas where you think might be uh, sensitive, then uh, you should be okay. The next thing is there's a lot of different uh, brands and types of top coat. Now if you're using an airbrush, there's uh, different kinds of top coat that you can use to just spray out of an airbrush. If you're just using a spray can like we're going to be using today, those different types. Usually I use a Mr. Hobby top coat, something like this. You can see here, Mr. Hobby top coat, very easy to see. Uh, but this is kind of a smaller container. I'm just going to go with a bigger one. This is made by GS Hobby. It's just a little bit cheaper, which is okay, which works out good for um, this kind of top coating where I just want to protect the paint. Usually for the final top coat, I'll use this one because I think it's probably a little bit nicer, but essentially, now, it's probably just the name that you're paying for, I mean essentially inside, it's probably pretty similar. I haven't used this one actually a whole lot yet, so I'll just have to see, I mean I could be wrong on that. I've mostly in the past only used this, so this is what I know uh, the best, but this is what we're going to be using today. Now, okay, there's more other brands of top coat as well. But the other thing, aside from the brand, you need to look at is the finish of the top coat. Now, it basically there's three different finishes for top coat. One is gloss, which is what we're going to be using in this case. The other one is semi-gloss, which is what this one happens to be. And then the other one is matte. Now, usually for the final top coat, I pretty much always use matte, with the rare exception. Um, but when you're doing the top coating at this stage where you just want to cover the paint and you're not totally finished with the kit, at this point it's usually best to use gloss and most people will always use gloss at this point because the matte is usually matte or semi-gloss is usually best for uh, once the kit is finished. So today we're going to be using gloss and 
I'm not going to really show you much of the spraying process or and any of it basically because it goes on and you like basically all the same rules apply as when we did primer and as when we did paint. If you want to, you can go back and take a look at those videos, the priming and painting videos. All the same rules are going to apply. Just want to make sure you shake it up really well. You want to make sure you spray from a good distance and in bursts, not in one constant spray because then you're going to um, spray on too much. The other thing is that uh, top coat is especially sensitive to the weather. So where I told you before you need to be careful about spraying in humid or very cold weather especially, um, that is especially true for top coat because it's one thing, it's a really easy way to ruin a lot of work is once you do, do all the work on a kit, like hours and hours of work, painting and doing all your panel lining, decals and stuff, and then you spray on the top coat while it's too humid like I've done before and then that will make your top coat just fog up and just everything will just be foggy and basically the entire kit is ruined. It is really terrible and it just sucks so just be careful. I've done it before and luckily it was on a kit that I didn't fully paint. It was on an RG kit so if that happens, though I'll just tell you, if that happens you can uh, just go in with some thinner and just uh, get rid of the top coat but then basically whatever you have underneath is going to be ruined as well because you have to work at it pretty hard with a thinner and you're pretty much just going to have to start over again but it can be saved I mean it's not totally ruined so uh, you're just in for quite a lot of work so just be careful so anyway with that we're going to need just the kind of same things we used for painting before I've got my block here and a bunch of these so uh, we also don't need to break everything up into each individual piece at this point. Like, for example, I'm going to be fine with just spraying this entire arm just like this as it is. So probably what I'll do in this case is just try to clip this. Uh, I can't really clip it into there. So maybe I'll just clip it onto this part here on the arm. And that'll be good enough just to spray some top coat all around this. And that will be good enough. The same thing uh, kind of goes for the body. I'll take off the head, but the body and the side skirts off and the thighs off. And I'll be fine to just spray this all as one piece together like that. There's no reason to really break it up any more than that. Maybe just the top and bottom, just because I might be a little bit worried that if I spray it like this, uh, this power cable is going to block um, from getting enough spray behind that. So just keep in mind, uh, as long as you can see all the areas where you want spray, then you can get spray there. So. Just make sure you don't have anything blocked that you don't want blocked. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and put all of these on some sticks on here, then step out and do some spraying and then we'll come back. So hang on just a minute. Okay, now I've got all these parts sprayed and as I'm waiting for them to dry because I'm out of space on my two blocks here and I have just a handful of parts that still need sprayed. As I'm waiting for those to dry, I just remember there was a couple things that I forgot to mention before. Number one, uh, about the drying time. The top coat takes relatively about the same amount of time to dry as just normal spray. Once again, you want to make sure the parts aren't uh, touching each other. But um, yeah, top coat still should be you know, relatively dry enough to touch within 15-20 minutes. Anyway, just want to be sure, I mean, if you can 
give it more time, it's always better anyway, just to take any chances before you touch it. If you want to be sure, I mean, touch an area where, you know, it's not going to matter if there's a fingerprint, but anyway, just give it enough time. With glossy, it's a little bit harder to tell because, you know, with matte or something, it looks kind of wet when you spray it on, but then when it's dry, it obviously looks very dry and matte finish. Glossy, it just stays glossy, so it's kind of hard to tell if it's wet or if it's just glossy, but anyway. You'll be able to tell and, like I said, just at least give it, I'd say, 20 minutes just to be safe and then uh, definitely don't work with it like a lot, don't handle it a lot for at least 30 minutes. I mean, 20 minutes may be good enough to at least take it off and just set it somewhere to cure some more, but uh, yeah. The other thing is make sure there's no dust on your parts because if there's any dust on your parts when you're spraying it on there, you're just sealing that dust in and then it's gonna show up. Uh, so you wanna make sure that your parts are as clean as possible if you wanted to wash them again before spraying the top coat, I think you could probably do that. Uh, the water, as long as you're not using acrylic paint, the water is not going to hurt the uh, lacquer that we sprayed or the enamel that we hand painted, so these parts would be fine to get wet um, just to make sure there's no dust on them. If you have like something like an ultrasonic cleaner, that would like be really the best, but those are pretty expensive. Um, so. Anyway, these are drying, then I'll spray the rest of these and uh, then we'll be ready to do some panel lining. Now, I might as well just go ahead and start talking about some panel lining now with you guys. Until recently, I was always using uh, just enamel paint for my panel liner, just something like this, uh, like we used before, XF1 flat black uh, Tamiya enamel paint. What you do is you just mix this with mix this with this and to a ratio that's basically similar to milk. I'm not sure the exact like drop ratio like two drops of this and six drops of this. I'm not sure on that. Sorry I can't really tell you guys. I'm just used to kind of just eyeballing it. Usually you only want a little bit of paint and then obviously not a lot of thinner but more thinner. Something if I had to guess something to like 20 the 30% paint and then like 75% thinner, something like that. You want it basically the consistency of milk and I'll show you guys a little bit more about that here in a second when I actually mix it up. Recently uh, I've found out about this as a lot of people have been uh, turning to this recently. It's a panel line accent color. It's basically the same thing, it's just already mixed for you. and. It's got uh, a little brush applicator on there, so you don't even need a uh, paintbrush. It's very, very convenient. Although I find it's a little bit too thin, uh, but I don't know. It is very convenient, so I will use this and I'll use the other way just to show you guys both and you can kind of see the difference. Uh, of course, if you wanted to make this a little bit uh, thicker, I guess you could maybe add a little paint to it maybe? I don't know, I've never tried, but it might be possible. If you want to see a more in-depth video about this, Dave, uh, the Gumplemeister, if you check out his channel, the Gumplemeister, he did a really in-depth video about using this. The other good thing about these is that they do come in different colors. Uh, this one's black, this one is brown, and they also make a gray. I don't have a gray right now, uh, but they, there are some options. I think for this kit, uh, we might use this brown, I think, because the frame is brown. It's got some brown on there. I might as well just use some more brown. I think will look pretty cool. But I think another reason that a lot of people use the brown is also for some weathering, which uh, we might take a look at later as well. So that's uh, the gist of the kind of basics of panel lining. We'll go into like actually doing the lining here in a bit once I'm finished with the top coat. So anyway. Give me some time to finish uh, spraying these and letting these parts dry and then we'll come back and we'll be ready to start doing some uh, panel lining. Okay, so while the last few parts with top coat are drying, let's go ahead and start looking at some panel lining. We've got a couple pieces here. Luckily, this kit doesn't really have a whole lot of panel lines. Uh, we actually even got rid of a few of the few that it has. So it's mostly going to be in some of the, like, the kind of detail areas and things like that. So. Uh, if you're going to use the Panaline Accent color, 
then that's all you need. You really don't uh, need anything else for doing the actual lining. You will need some Q-tips to clean it up, but if you're gonna use that, then you're set to go. If you wanna use paint and mix it, you'll need the same kind of paint tray. The color, uh, I'm gonna use flat black, but you can use, I mean, really whatever you want, whatever color you wanna use, um, some enamel thinner, and then once again, a really tiny brush. So basically the same th stuff that we used in the last video for the detail painting. So why don't we go ahead and do try some of this first. I'll just show you guys how to do it just in case you're wondering. And uh, if you want, you can go back and look at uh, Henry's video. Henry uh, or Vegeta8259 has a really good uh, tutorial about doing this. This is how I learned from him. So basically just going to do the same thing for... Make sure you shake it really well. Uh, I'm going to open it up. And once again, we don't need a whole lot of paint, so I'm just going to use a toothpick. You can use whatever you want. I don't recommend using the brush to mix the paint and the thinner. Use the brush for brushing. Use something else for mixing. Um, if you're using the brush and then like putting the paint in there using the brush, then uh, pouring in a little thinner, however you're going to do it, even if you're using just the eyedropper, then, uh, then mixing it with the brush, it's a good way to damage your brush uh, faster. So just keep the brush from brushing and use something else. So I'm just gonna take a little bit. I really only want a couple drops because I'm just gonna show you guys a little bit of this and then I'm gonna use the other, other uh, panel line accent color for the rest. So I'm only gonna use a little bit there. That's enough. A little bit of paint in there. Then need some thinner using the same dropper. Take some and that's probably gonna be enough. Let's check. I'm just gonna mix it up using the toothpick. It doesn't take a lot to do the actual panel lining, so don't use too much. I mean, I mixed a very, very little bit. Usually I make a little bit more, uh, but I know I'm not going to be using all that much of black, so uh, just need to make a little bit. Once it's thoroughly mixed, you shouldn't see, uh, if you see there, I, it's all pretty mixed. I can still see a couple like uh, clumps of black paint there. So I'm going to mix it up just a little bit more. And that looks pretty good. Now if you drag this up on the side, I can see how that drips back down. That drips down pretty fast, so I know this is actually a little bit too thin. Uh, it actually needs a little bit more paint. It's a little bit too thin, so I'm going to add another drop of paint to here. Should be more than enough. I actually got a little bit more paint than I need. Can be a little bit more scientific about it. Uh, as you can see, I'm just kind of uh, doing it very loosely, I guess you could say. Anyway, now that we've got more paint in there, should be a little bit thicker. We can try it again the paint up on the side and I can see it's going down much more slowly a lot more paint is sticking to the wall as it's going down so that's gonna be pretty good as a lot of people say you want to keep it to basically the consistency of milk but if you don't uh, drink milk or if you live in a country where they don't necessarily necessarily drink milk every day uh, you may not know very well the consistency of milk so I don't know I just um, if you can see that that's basically the consistency that you want. So, let's put that to the side. 
we're good to go. So I'm gonna I'm gonna use black uh, only for the uh, brown parts. So only for the frame because I I want to use the brown brown paneling accent color for the armor. But I can't use brown on brown uh, inner frame. It's not gonna really show up very well. So I need to use black. So I'm going to take off this armor piece first, if I can, there we go, put that to the side. So here's our piece, Let me adjust the focus a little bit there for you, you can see nice and shiny, and there's just that one part painted in grey there. I'm just going to take the brush, mix it around a little bit, and you don't need a whole lot on your brush too, so just a little there and you only have to touch it to the surface uh, and it'll f just fill in the gaps naturally so I'm just gonna touch that a little bit and should be filling these spaces pretty well these lines here on this part that I'm touching are not actually very deep so there's not really a whole lot to fill but let's take this one here uh, that line is pretty deep so be easier to see if I just touch this to here. There, that color just fills in. And there's a little bit on the outside, but that's okay. We're gonna clean that up here in just a moment. Same thing for the elbows, elbow parts there. Touch it, and that just fills it in. No problems, very easy, and doesn't take a whole lot of paint. So, that's pretty good gonna put some down in this part as well and basically it just helps to just give it some definition so a lot of this part is gonna actually be covered up so I don't need to go too crazy putting it on like everywhere possible but I just want to put it in some of these areas should be good enough. I do have the hand on here as well, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the hand. There's a lot, there's usually a lot of details uh, on the hand, so it's pretty simple to just brush some, uh, just brush some on and it will fill in all the spaces between the fingers and everything like that. Okay, and that's pretty much it. I know it's kind of hard to see because it's so glossy. I know you're getting a lot of glare there, so sorry about that, guys. But I think you can basically see what's going on. There's another piece of the inside of the binder. I'm just going to drop some in some of these areas here. Alright, now uh, I've got the few brown parts that needed some black lining. I've now got some lining on there. Now, to clean it up, we're gonna use the same, pretty much the same method that we used for uh, cleaning up the detail painting before, since we're just using thin down enamel paint. If we need to clean it up, we just need to use some enamel thinner. So, just like before, I'm just going to take a little bit of thinner from the cap. Make sure that there's not too much on there. I don't need, really need all that much. So I'm going to then just take the part and focus the camera. I can just rub that on there and take.
take up any extra black paint that was on there. It's pretty simple, as you can see my Q-tip is just picking up the extra black paint. There wasn't a whole lot on here because uh, also this is just an inner frame part so I don't really mind if it's a little bit dirty as well. I'm not as concerned about cleaning it up perfectly because um, like a little bit extra kind of uh, like black panel line leakage or overspill like I don't know any extra on the inner frame kind of looks uh, a bit like just oil or grease on the mechanics so you know having a little bit on the inner frame it's not always uh, bad it looks actually a little bit realistic at times so it's just one form of weathering that you can actually use to your advantage and that's pretty much it pretty simple and once again uh, just change your q-tips often uh, like this one that's that's already used enough there so it's time to use a new one uh, q-tips are cheap don't be cheap with them it's not worth it uh, so yeah that's pretty much it I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the rest of these brown parts then I'll show you about using the accent color okay so we're done with that and now it's time to try some of the panel line accent color so first once again as you can see if I turn it upside down you can see that there's a lot of the black uh, paint or sorry the brown paint is actually just settled in there so I need to shake it up very well first so let's do that there it's you can see actually well mixed there it's all brown so we're ready to go and like I said this uh, just has a little brush applicator there at the end so it's just like we did before all we gotta do is just touch this into where we want it and it'll just fill in that space very easy And as you can see, this is a little bit more of an orange-brown than like the mahogany, which is very, very dark. But it's going to be okay. It's going to uh, add to the interesting look of the kit, I think. Hard to see on camera, but there's that little brown on the cracks. It actually looks really, really good on there. I quite like that. It does give it, uh, because of the color of the brown, it does look a little bit like rust actually. green and I thought oh pink is probably right to match there if you can see that I actually went way out of where I was supposed to I can just wipe that a little bit away with my finger it's looking like this uh, brown color is much, I don't know why I'm surprised by this, but it's much more brown than I thought and it's very much looking like rust, so I think it's going to actually help us uh, with the slight weathered look I want to go for this kit. Uh, even though it's a space mobile suit, I've been contemplating how um, 
how much it really makes sense to have rust on a space mobile suit because uh, the lack of oxygen kind of makes it not really make sense that there would be any rust in space. But I don't know, I guess when it's like in the hangar or something, right? It must get a little bit rusty. What do you guys think? I need to look at some other reference photos, some other kits to see if if the pros do it. If the pros do it, then it must be okay. Here's one of the feet. I was gonna paint some details on the feet, but I kind of decided against it just because uh, just couldn't be bothered. We'll put in some lining and that'll be good enough. I usually don't mind uh, painting some details on the bottom of the feet. Alright guys, well finally after doing all of the lining and then having to inevitably do a bit of touch up as well, uh, pretty much everything is done for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and snap some parts together to give you guys a look at how it's going compared to how you saw it at the end of the last video. It's not gonna be a whole lot of difference because like I said, it's not really a lot of lining on this kit, but there is some that you should be able to see um, just there and just the black. Uh, for the power cables I used black instead of brown just to help uh, make some separation there. And the head, yeah, there's not going to be a whole lot new on the head because the only line is basically that triangle on the forehead and this line going across the back. And here's the backpack. Brown on the the brown on that really dark color on the backpack really looks rusty. So kind of interesting. But looking pretty cool. Looking good. I'm pretty pleased with this so far. Uh, what else can I put on here? Also, I guess while we're here, we can probably glue the legs together now. Um, I'm just trying to be mindful because of the uh, weathering that I want to do is just like some basically some chipping on some of the edges and I just want to be sure that I don't want to do like some chipping on here that's going to be easier while this part is not attached because once it's attached um, it might be kind of hard to get into like some of those corner areas. But don't think, just trying to think if those areas are, there's going to be anywhere that's going to be really very tough to do that. I think there is, so I think I'm going to wait, uh, just better wait a little bit more. I'm really impatient, I really want to see uh, how it's going to look with the leg all together, but uh, I think I'm just going to have to wait a little bit more. Uh, so, might actually get to recording that very soon. As, um, just not able to push that on there anyway. I need to uh, sand that down, get some paint and uh, top coat off of this area so it'll slip on there easier. But anyway, uh, so that's pretty much it for this video. In the next video we will do some decals and a little bit of weathering. I'm not sure which uh, I'm gonna do, which one I want to film first and uh, which because uh, it might be kind of a combination of both at the same time, but I don't want to split those videos up into two different videos. So, uh, we'll see about that. Here's just with this, and let's see if I can find one of the side skirts here. looking like and 
Yeah, so I thought might as well throw the arm armor there. Arm armor on. Just so you can see how that's looking. Legs and the feet are here. Uh, just through, like I said, just through some brown lining in the bottom of the feet, that's it. But anyway, looking pretty cool. Yeah, well enough. So that's gonna be it for now, you guys. I'll see you in the next video.